Hi everyone. How's everybody doing today? Let me get this. I'm doing good. Uh, kind of nuke my mouse uh, with coffee, so we'll see. You might hear some voice behind me. Uh, one of my kids doesn't have school today, so he's talking with a friend. Just letting you know. Uh, I read. Hi, Aurora. Hi, Hannah. Now, let, let me see. Panina. Got it this time. Hi, Mary Lou. Hi, Pam. Hi, Robin. Trying to say hi to everyone. So, I met Mitzi. I think that's how it's pronounced. Hi, Teresa. Hey, Kathleen. Oh, you got COVID? That's not good. Take care of yourself, please. Hey, Miriam. Hi, Carol. I think I have a buddy. So, um, about yesterday, I sue, I sent, yeah, for some, uh, yesterday, what happened is that, um, the API, API YouTube did some change and they kind of forgot to send the memo to StreamYard. So we weren't able to uh, create any lives or any video. Everything's back to normal, as you can see. Uh, and we'll see what's going to happen next. Uh, I need to go look. At um, let me do something. Um, someone told me that uh, the link in the description are not the right one. Or there's miss one missing. <clears throat> so um we'll fix that after class. Uh Pam, can you give the link in chat for the um which one I'm doing today? Turning. Turn reverse. We'll start we'll start with that. I'm sorry. There's supposed to be uh, two links. One is the reverse. Let me try to see if I can have it. Um, okay, I got it. The links are fine. You sure? One should be um, a reverse work, and the other ones should be about folding. Okay, I'll check that after class. So, uh, as usual, we have some housekeeping to do. 
so I'll start with the housekeeping. Um, okay, it was in the email, right? Oh, it should both both uh, documents should be on one page. Thank you, Pam. Uh, talking about documents, I was asked uh, if I would do some um, walkthrough for the part two and part today. Uh, yes, I will. Just give me some time. Uh, there's so much going on behind the scene. Uh, I need to prepare for each week, per week. So uh, I'm doing my best. But yes, I will put some walkthrough in. Uh, in time. Uh, another stuff you might see my little lady, my cat, running around the downshot. Don't worry, she'll get her place and sleep. So, so, like I said, before we begin, uh, I have important information to share on behalf of the online chatting class. Yes, I'm still reading. It's easier for me. Um, to join our group page, please register using the link in the description below. It's a simple process that ensures security and privacy of our member. It helps us comply with the nonprofit requirements. Rest assured that our, your registration information will be safely submitted to the nonprofit organization we are affiliated. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, register allow us to track your progress and grants you access to our exclusive community. We won't send any spam message, and if you already received email or have access to our page uh, and our Facebook group, there's no need to register again. You're already part of the community. As we are all volunteers who willingly dedicate time during our the week to ensure you have a good experience. However, we also recognize the importance of personal time and prioritize taking weekends off to recharge. This has allowed us to maintain our well-being and considering providing you with the best possible class. We are grateful for the generous, generous donation we've received. Thanks to your support, we've covered up expenses until 2031. However, due to current circumstances, we're suspending all donations. We'll keep you updated of any change. In the meantime, please show us your support by liking, subscribing, and commenting on our content. Thank you. So, let's start this. Like I said, for those who are new, my name is Katia, and I'm uh, thrilled to be here with you today. As a French-Canadian, I'm excited to share the art of needle tatting with you. So, let's continue this wonderful journey with us. I'll start with, Will, uh, is there any question on the prior uh, videos and live we did? Hi, Liz. <clears throat> Hi, jo Joanne. Any question, anyone?
thank you, Marianne. Um, I'm trying. I try my best to give and out uh, clear. Um, but uh, as a French, uh, trying to translate sometimes it doesn't come out really nice. Um, I did a paper that I need to redo uh, because when I translated it with uh, all of the tools that people say that we have that make our life easier. Sometimes it's true, but in this case, it wasn't true at all. I started uh, hearing and um, reading what I wrote in English, and it started with thread, needle, everything was fine. And then we were kind of not doing tatting anymore, but more tattooing. So, yeah, I need to rephrase everything so we can uh, be more fluid. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Tom. So, um, if you don't have any questions, let's go down and see uh, the work with, uh, well, we'll look, look at the paper first, then we'll work on it, okay? Let's do this. Can you all see this? <coughs> hmm. This is uh, a paper that uh, was done some time ago about reversing work, turning work, and rotating work. We need to understand uh, that needle tatter, what everything means to us, because most of the shuttle will work with this reverse work. We rarely see the turn work in shuttle. It's done, but it's rare. And rotating is placing, it's seen also in needle and shuttle, and it doesn't change a lot. So, the reverse work, as it gets, it explains the line of progression. I'm going to show it to you, uh, down shot afterward. I just wanted to give you some information on the document so you do understand what I'll be talking about in the down, down shot. Okay? So in a reverse work, that's basically what shuttle tatters do every time they do uh, from a they go from a ring to a chain. In our case, um, in the way we're going to work today, because we're still working with the cut thread method, uh, ring and bare thread, or call it. We'll talk about those terms next week, uh, but. We're going to work with it to understand um, the direction that we want to go so it's easier and less uh, technique to understand and master at the same time. So, shuttle tether goes from reverse work, meaning they're going to flip upside down and downside up each time they're going to go between each element. In the case that of the turn work, it's going to be like a page of a book. So you're going to flip the page from right to left or left to right. Those are the two main parts that we need to remember. So we'll understand what I'll be doing down shot uh, shortly. Okay. I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm not able to see that. Close up, and we'll do uh, some practice, and I'm going to show you the difference. There we go. So, um, 
I'm going to be closer. I chose the pink one today. It seems to be the one who was uh, showing the best. Uh, by the way, for those who are wondering, um, the light I have, the lighting I have, it's basically a uh, natural light. So I need to work each time and uh, which color of thread that I'm going to use or maybe change the background. Sorry, hope anybody got sick there. So for this one, got my ruler again. I'm going to measure about uh, six feet. Six feet, two meter for those who are um, in metric. And now I forgot my count. Don't count while you're talking. You might forget something. I'm going to cut. <clears throat> Hopefully, I'll have the same uh, issue I had uh, earlier this morning because uh, I'm about twisting the um, thread. I'm going to my. I'll be able uh, to show you uh, what I do when the thread is twisted. So, um, okay, let's do it like this. Uh, I'm going to have you part this way. I need um, somebody to give me numbers and picos. How many picos? And if you want it, join or not join. So, anyone? I'm going to write it down, though, so I can remember. So, I want a ring. Give me one number. Somebody. Hi, Tasmin. Okay, let's start with five double stitch. Let's do it like this. Five double stitch, a pico. And I'll go with um, Illis, like this, three, you go, three, go. Good. She had a one, two, three, four, four. this, you go, and five. Okay. Can you all see this? Thank you, Tasneem. Actually, your name is easy to pronounce for a French person. And we'll learn at the same time uh, the short way of writing stuff. So that's going to be the first ring I'll try to get the mm, give me a second uh, hopefully you're able you'll be able to see what I'm going to write again okay do we join or not We're talking about making a joint air and a joint air. So this should be a plus in symbols. Okay. 
So this is going what we're going to work today for the ring, where we're going to put the join, and we'll use the same uh, sequence for learning how to turn and not turn, okay? So let's me, let me start. Hopefully I'll have enough thread. I'm stuck. The rule is in the way. Get out of the way. So, when you start a project, again, try to have the space, the amount of thread before you start your first double stitch. Equal about the same length of your needle. It will help you a lot at the end when we're going to uh, hide ends. So I usually do that. I start and then everything's in the way. So we said five. So let's do five. We'll do small pico. You can do the tiny to join, but to help you uh, see better, I'm doing a uh, small pico. Now I'm going to show you at the same time while we're here. Uh, remember, I showed you how to use the pico gauge like this. I'm going to show you the Pico Gauge like this. Okay. Pico Gauge under. Hold, hold it. Let me try to see. You need to put the Pico Gauge very close to the head of the double stitch. Like this. You hold it. You wrap over to your first stitch and bring it behind and close it like this. Did you see that? Or you want me to show you? If you want me to show this again, say again, please. Okay. So let me get closer. So when you do it this way, you put the pico gauge under like this, and it needs to be close. If you can see the difference, I put it close to the head of the double stitch. I hold it in place, take the thread over do the fat first half, and I'm going to show it like this, and pull it not over like that. It needs to go behind. I was out of focus, right? I'll show that again. Okay, stay in focus under like this. Take the thread over. The way this way, and I need to. You can see the thread is behind. Close the first half. Make sure that your pico gauge is under the head, and there's no gap. Then do the second half again, and do the second half. Oops, I need to stop watching the screen and look at what I'm doing. Here's one. We need to do a uh, three double stitch. So you leave the gauge like this. And what you do is in focus, first half, second half, but it's still, to, it needs to be behind the gauge. If you're having difficulty like this, put the gauge a bit behind, go in front, do the first one, second one. So now I have three. 
tread wrapped over the pico gauge. You first staff need to be behind the pico gauge, and you second half. That's two. Two double stitch again. Again, thread over. First staff needs to be behind when you close it. Do the second half. Two, three. So when you're you're done, you pulled it out, and your pico is going to look weird like this. What you need to do is just open them up. That's something that uh, most uh, shuttle tighter can't do because. When we open our stitch like this, it gives the tension and it gets the um, torsion or uh, stretch it enough so it doesn't have a full plea. Oh, yeah. Like this. Okay. I'll be showing uh, the way, I'll be, all of the work today, I'll be showing it also with uh, the other side, the way I just showed it, okay? So after three needs to be a small, let's go back this way, over, tread over, first half, close, second half, that's one, two, three, five. Like this. Okay. We need to close. Cat hair. Close carefully. This. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I want to show you what we need to understand. When we do true ring, we work over one type of um, uh, tread. We don't work with both thread, okay? So the working thread and the core thread is the same. That's why when we close, we close it exactly the same way as shuttle tatter do, because they work over a thread. That's the working thread. That that's the sorry. That's the core thread. The working thread is here, okay? I'm going to close. Usually when you close a ring, you shouldn't be working your ring all the way, okay? You keep it in one hand. That's my core thread. That's my tail. Um, where did I put that? I, I need to flip. Just give me a few seconds. Sorry for the noise. I was looking for the clip. I'm going to put the clip on my tail. You know the one that we have at the beginning that we leave? Closer so you can see. Okay. Last week, what we did was basically put the ring leaving that tail. I want you to see. 
leaving my tail like this, right? If I do so, the next ring is going to be on the same side and it won't be uh, facing the opposite way. Okay? Shuttle tatter, what they will do is flip like this to have the back side uh, of the ring. Okay? And they'll start doing. Actually, it's the other way there. Sorry. Their ring usually start, sorry, start this way for them. The head are upside on the top for needle tatter. Our head are of the stitch are below. Okay. If I want to have a brick rack, I need to turn like a page like this. Putting the tail on the other side, like this. Take the needle, put it in front. I'm going to take uh, about, I think, three quarter. Put an inch looking so. It's a bit more than three quarter. Put it between. The last, I know that's going to put it down. Like I exactly like we did last week, between, over, thread under. Now I need, I'm used to work front side, back side, so I need some time, a minute when I go so, to one. Okay. The one's done, I can leave that. So we're doing. Five, now let's do that, those pico again, we need small one, we said we were going to join, yeah, at the third one, so small pico, this, take it down, close the pico, now let's try that again, take the pico, same way as, like this, should I put it like this, maybe if I, you see it better like that, Take the thread over, make the first movement for the first half of the double stitch, pull the loop behind the pico gauge, and come and close it carefully. Okay, I'll get, let me do that. I'll explain that in a few. Uh, Panina is asking why. Am I joining? Uh, I am not joining to the previous string instead uh, of the small pico. Ye yes and no, because we are learning how to reverse our work so that our double, uh, our ring, not double stitch, um, are uh, not facing the same side, but opposite of each other. Uh, we, the first and the second ring will be the same. One. I lost my count. Three. Second. Again. And the other one. The third one. Up. Oh. First movement. Behind. The reason we need to put it behind, uh, if you can see, is so that the pico 
kind of wrap around the gauge or the thread. That's why. I'm going to pull it away. I need two more. Small pico and five. Again, I don't like the way the double stitch looks. So I often pull them apart so they get their tension better and then pull it back the way I want it to. And then close the ring. Now, uh, <clears throat> just a tip while I'm doing uh, closing that ring. When you pull the ring, you hold it between your index and your thumb like this. Okay, put it there, and you, it, and pull the thread until you kind of feel uh, the elasticity of the thread. That doesn't want to come back, and your ring is going to be a lot. <clears throat> more pretty and it's going to keep its shape. The double stitch is going to be tightened tighten close to each other and it's going to help you with your tension. Okay. Let me put this down. Okay. So I can explain the question that this way. Okay. That's what we did. Can you see this? I'm going to work with my crayon. Okay. This was our first. Let me put this back on. This was our, was our first ring. Okay. This is the second ring. If I was going to join the ring, the second ring to the first ring, look what it would have done. Can you see? Is everybody following me? Both ring would have been like this. So basically, we wouldn't have the fact of being opposite to each other like this. That's why we turn, we reverse our work or turn. Uh, needle tatter usually turn. Shuttle tatter reverse work. That's very important to remember for needle tatter that we, when we see reverse work, we usually do a turn because uh, later on, when we're going to see the ring and chain, um, where uh, we do a, uh, that a knot, a securizing knot, to help us to keep our ring um, stable before starting the chain because of that movement we do turn not reverse work we do your reverse work in other uh, techniques but for our base it's turning so we need to assume that when we see a reverse work that we're turning the page everybody got that Now I need to take this one. I'm going to wait a little bit to see if you have questions.
My pleasure, Marianne. Uh, that's there's a lot of information for needle tatter that are based on shuttle, and I do understand there's a lot of work that can that's done exactly the same way that shuttle tatter do for needle, but there are some things. Small things, they're not huge, but small things that we need to understand. We need to understand what we're doing with the tool we have. Um, shuttle tatter has their, um, the way of, a way of manipulating their shuttle so they can achieve what they have. There's, it's the same thing with the needle. And if you're finger tatting, you know that uh, passing that thread and so on, it's another uh, work of fingers. So now we want to join. That's what we wrote, right? Let me put the paper here. Uh, not good enough. Okay, I'm trying, I'm trying. So we need to do uh, the next ring, the third ring. So again, I need to turn. You could turn like a page of a book, or you can go back and read the last page. I like better to go back to read the last page than turning because it does give uh, a torsion on the thread if you always rotate in the same way. So by flipping, uh, um, turning the page, flipping the page like from right right to left and then go back to the page you don't have any torsion you don't create torsions and twist in your thread so again put the needle over sorry bring the hook all right let me get my hook placed Needle over the thread with the marker is on my right. Put the thread there. The needle between both thread. Put the pico gauge over. Bring the thread over. Can be over the needle or under, like I showed last time. Make sure you're tight. One. Now that's the first one done. I can drop the space. Okay. So now I need to join, right? I did my five double stitch. Everybody agree? I'm not going to join at the ring number two, but going to join on the ring number one. Place, place the ring between my fingers, place my teeth, my crochet, go over, grab the thread. That's not the right crochet. Grab the, again. Grab the thread. Come on. Come on. Okay. Pull the thread that's coming from the last double stitch inside, coming up in front of the needle, and then pull. Right? Now I have first one done. <laughs> it's panina uh it's it's a way really fast to get i usually have uh, also my pico gauge in there that's why it's a type of finger chatelaine chatelaine in french and i have those tiger claw on it and i have a bit bigger um ring uh those uh, pin I used last time, uh, somebody gave me. So I put.
put it there and I have all my uh, padding going down like that. And the pico and so on. So, yeah, I can work uh, in the car. I don't need a pad or something. I just need my ring. So, yeah. Some tips. So, I did the join. We're supposed to do one. Oops. Like I said, don't do what I do. You should be a lot closer to your eye when you're way, way working. Oh God, not on the tip because you're going to work twice because those stitch can uh, fall out of the needle. That's three. So. Let's do again. Pico under. That's it. Take the thread over. Make the first double stitch. Go past it behind. Close. Second half needs to be behind. That's one. Still again. Thread next pico. Thread needs to be over. Make the first half. Pass it behind. Second half needs to be behind. Next stitches. Stitches still behind. I need to do this. Third pico. Thread over, first stitch, behind, like I like I just saw. Let me let me give you some tips when you work this way. Those tip, this tip is mostly for a uh, needle, uh, shuttle tatter. It's something else. I'm having trouble. Okay, when you do it like this, you do your first half. Okay, and I pull, I'm going to show you like this, can you see? I, in front, did the first step, and I pull like this. The loop on the needle, I keep my fingers in the loop. When it's behind, then I'm able to let go and bring the loop, the first stitch. Second, like this, again. Oh, you didn't see that. Let me do the first one. Like this. Second one is usually behind, but it's look like this behind when it works. Okay. So when it's done, you take the pico out. Again, like I said, I like to spread them out. Now I have um one, two, three, small, small one for the next join, and five. Now that is done. Now this is the part that uh, everybody is going to mess up. I do it more often than I want. But because I'm teaching you, I'm going to be uh, an expert right now. But believe me, I'm not. I forget about it a lot. Remember when I, I said that we need to... Uh, oh, I got exactly what I was looking for. Do you see this? Is what do you see? Tell me, tell me, what do you see? Yep, 
Thank you. A snake in <laughs> red. Yeah, and uh, a twisted thread. So, it is. Yeah. I'm needle tatting. My thread wasn't twisting when I started. But now it did. Anybody have an idea why? Does anybody know why? I was hoping for this to happen today. Hi, Monica. Anyone, please give me your opinion, your thoughts. I need, I need to know if somebody has an idea why, why this happened. Okay, Anna says maybe because of all the reverse. Anyone else? Elias says, says a frequent twisting of ring to get in line for the next move. Hi, Joanne. You're not late. And the re uh, replay is going to be there afterwards. You're getting in the good stuff. We're talking about why I got a twist like this. Red said, I'm just working it. Red, you're not uh, far fetched. It's part of that. Okay, I'm going to explain something to everybody. Needles. Uh, hey. Great course, I get many. Thank you, uh, Joanne. Um, perhaps. Okay. Uh, everybody knows that the needles are round, right? There's no way each time I work and I play, I touch the needle, get my finger out of it, off of them, go back to take the needle and so on. There's no way I'm able to always hold the needle in the same exact place. So without our knowledge, well, now you will know, we will have turned, the needle's going to turn between our fingers. Yeah, that's mean, that's exactly it. It, rolling of the needle. So because of that, it's going to give needle tatter this twist. That is normal. Now, that said, I don't want anyone to go, okay, I'm going to hold the needle and say, that's the place. And if you do that, you'll hurt your hands and your fingers and your wrist because of the tension. It's natural and it's normal. It's normal that it's going to turn. Um, Sometimes uh, some people uh, you might have seen this on the internet, have curved needle because the way they work, it bent a little bit. Those are the greatest needle that you can work with because of that. Uh, your needle doesn't uh, roll in your finger between your fingers as much. Now, don't go and try to bend your needle uh, so it has a curve. See if I have one. Sorry for the now noise. Look at this needle. Oh. Let me take my cell. You're going to probably see it better. Can you see it's slightly curved? Those are Andean's uh, needle, by the way. 
because it's bent, when I put my end on it like this, and the way I, it it grabs the natural form of my end, so it's easy for me to work. But don't bend it by yourself. Let play with your brand new needles, and um, your your is going to happen. But don't throw them away. You know, uh, everybody has a pair of uh, slippers that or jeans that don't want to throw out. Well, when they're bent like that, it's basically that type of sensation when you work. Um, Pam, 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 you... S okay, what kind of needle? Like I said, all of my needles are from NDM, the one I'm working uh, in lives. Uh, they are all the uh, basic set of four needles. You have the uh, size number three, five, seven, and bonus uh, is eight. Number eight are thinner threads, so yeah, they curve a lot uh, faster. Now, let's go back to our uh, issues. So, when you look at the tail here. Oh, don't. Yeah, uh, Joanne says, I, I had to, that happened to my needle, and I thought I had to buy new ones because they were ruined. Oh, they're not. I love my old needles. I teach with always brand new, and I'm so happy when they start curving a little bit. So, yeah. Okay. I don't remember who told me that twist, but it I think it was Georgia or something. You see the twist here, okay? If I take my needle and I twi twist it or turn it, I hold my double step and twi twist it like from the front to the back, look what's going to happen. You see? Did you see that? <clears throat> Did you all see that? Or you want me to do it again? Yes, I haven't done the twist. And depending the the side the twist is, you just need to either with try, put uh, turn the needle towards the back or the front. You want to see it again? Okay, give me a few seconds. I'm going to go and twist it again. Okay, got the twist again. See? I'm going to do it. Going to shorten the. Okay. Trying to find this. Okay. When you go that tail. So I took the shows, shows it, turn from towards the back. I'm going to have another, there we go. It was a little bit harder because uh, the tail, I kind of tried to lengthen it instead of keeping it short. That's, when you tap, please, again, that's too long. Never, never go beyond an inch, an inch and a half. So now that is done. Next thing is 
we need to close that ring. Remember I said you put your piece in your finger like this. Put your thumb over. Take the thread and pass it over. Your thread goes under and pull. Like you see, I don't really let go. So here's the second ring, and I pull too tight. Remember last week I said you will have ring and you want them all of the same size. Flip. Place it. And tighten. So now I'm going to let that go. So we have two. I'm going to, that way I'm showing it to you, like this, with the thread coming from above here, and the ring above. That's the way shuttle pattern when they, they close their ring, it looks. That's how their work. They see their work when they close. But for us, it's like this. We're kind of upside down. That. When we work. Bear thread are unbearable. There's they're always in the way. So I need to have like this. Keep going. If I don't turn, let's try. Less finger in the way. That's the okay, less finger in the way. So if I want to work, is my thread here for the other one in the right place? Do you think? Exactly, Marianne, like the page of a book. Anybody know why we need to turn? I can give you some clue. When we uh, talk about the positioning of the ring, when we need to join. This way, let me take my needle again. If, this way, if I need to join, the join is going to be there. How do I, how do I join the ring that is above the needle? In most work, you never have to do that. With some exception that we'll see it shortly. I, I I'll be able I'll be uh going over today. I'm sorry. 
um, I should have kind of do this in two classes instead of one um, because the ring air is over and we can. So I need to flip like a page of a book like this, keeping my ring always down in this book. Take the needle over. Like the way I like to do my space is with the pico gauge between the thread, like I said, and the needle. When it's done, the exactitude oops, of the space is exact by doing that because there's not a small gap. So let's do this faster now. I'll need to join this way to the last one here. This over. Now, again, the way uh, over, first half, behind, and half, behind, we need three, whoops, see, put it back, again. When that happens, I usually try to uh, redo it instead of trying to uh, fix it. It's just a double stitch. Three. Over. I'm getting short on thread. So that's three. Let's see if I'm going to have enough thread to finish this one. So you see, I've been working with uh, on the thread, not in the eye, not threaded in the needle. Okay. I'm going to thread the needle. Always, if you unthread your needle, finish your stuff. Always remember to retread it. So. Thread, retread. Let's do this. Close the ring. Here. Mm -hmm. Trying to find something that might help you see better. Let's 
try this. Can you see it better? So I'll go back up and I'll chat a bit with you and ask you some questions. Um, I'm back. So I have a question uh, to you all. Uh, it's four o'clock. Uh, I want to know, do you want me to stop here? And next week we're going. We could look uh, more in depth, less stress, with the fold and join, uh, because there's a lot of ins and twists and uh, stuff to think about when I'm going to explain it. Uh, I'm trying to figure, like I said, my plan, the plan for each class, and I'm always wondering if I have enough. But today. Um, Show me that uh, I need to stick with one technique and do uh, per class so we can go more in depth and I'm give, uh, I can give you more explanations so you're at ease and understand what you're doing. So, what do you say that we keep the fold and join for next week and uh, talk about? Uh, wording and uh, expression and terms uh, with that next week because uh, we need to know what we're doing so far so what do you think do you agree I know there's a lot of people who want to go fast. I do understand. I really do. But understanding uh, each technique individually when you get in a big project, uh, and if you know those techniques individually, it's going to be a breeze to do those big projects. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I don't want to rush anyone, and I want to be there to help you understand and figure out uh, how to do those patterns. Um, so yeah. Um, Tasmin, um, Tasmin is asking, I can't, you can't have a long thread on the needle on like the, uh, the gun, <laughs> yeah, the amount thread on the shuttle. Exactly. Um, we there's there's people that let me I'll go back down in this to show you what I need I am going to explain. It won't take long. So look at this. Um so let's shred the needle. It's turning the work, Teresa. Turning the needle. Okay, I've seen people going, uh, pulling. Hmm. I'm having fun trying to trim my needle right now. Yes, I'm stubborn. Yes, I have a needle treader, but not for this. Okay. Uh, I've seen people work with so much thread on the eye of the needle, but people don't understand. I'm going to give you a preview. Yes. Is 
one day work. There's double stitch. And pass it. I won't go. I just wanted to do this. I'm going to take that. Like this. Can you see the double? Let me try to focus. Okay, we got it. I know it's pale, but can you see? Oops. Both threads are going inside. And they're stretching the leg of the double st uh, stitch. So when you pull your thread, long extension of thread, you're stretching your thread inside. Like I showed last week, uh, yeah, last week with my, um, I don't remember how to say that. Uh, the, the when I explained the collapse, everything that's collapsing when you pull, remember? so. By doing that, you're stretching your thread. So yes, it's going to collapse at the end. That's why I don't recommend this, going and having long extension double thread to, to work. So yes, needle tad here uh, learns to add thread a lot more often than uh, shuttle tatter. That's true. But we're also pros at hiding ends at the end. Okay. Look, I took, not sure if you're going to see. Let me try. I'm going to try to focus on this, not sure. Can you see the space in here? Can you see the spare, the, the space that's beside the double stitch here and the core coming out? That's what a gaposis, or what I, I usually call uh, the stitch, the double knot's going to collapse. So it's not going to look good, and it's going to be um, not crisp. So that's why you don't, I don't, I don't usually uh, suggest that. Okay, going back up. Okay, uh, looking at the question, my pleasure, Tessany. Um, it is, um, shuttle tether with the question, is the loop forming the joint count as a part of the next double stitch? Yeah, um, test, uh, it is, it all depends on the designer. Some people do count that loop as a double stitch, and therefore they're going to do uh, the second movement instead of restarting the sequence of first and second. Uh, I personally don't count it, and I start with uh, a double stitch after that uh, as normal. But it all depends on the designer. Sometimes it's uh, written in the pattern, sometimes it's not. As long as you're consistent all through your project, you'll be fine. Yes, if you like the, if you like today's live, please like hit the like button, subscribe. Um. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Anna, you'd love to uh, learn everything in one sitting. Uh, you even would love to pick my brain. I know. Don't. I can present you some people that doesn't want to pick my brain anymore. So, yeah. So, 
if I read correctly, uh, next week we'll keep the uh, folder joint for next week. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's class. Uh, and hopefully you'll practice. By the way, like you've seen, uh, I did the project today with your account, not mine, yours. So you showed me that every one of you can do patterns and exercise. And you could put it in your tatting journal that we will be talking about uh, in a couple of weeks. So, everybody, it was really fun teaching you today. And I'll see you all next week.